Okay, so Rafe has our official bucket list list. Yes. That's right. We've talked about bucket list on here so many times. We thought, and we're, we're getting ready to implement a new, stay tuned. We have a new contest with punishments coming up. And we thought maybe as a, as a flip side to that, we talk about bucket lists so much that we would, instead of just being in competition with each other, we would also have a series of videos where we actually try to help each other check things off our bucket this list, is all which is a nice thing. Lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. That's right. To help us check things off our bucket list. And to nice. soften the blow of the horrible things we're going to do to each Absolutely. other in the other competition. Yeah, come the fall, which we have a big Riz Olympics announcement uh, mm -hmm. to make come the fall. Uh, yes, let's lift each other up first. Yes. We build up and then we break down. That's right. Okay. So, so yeah, okay. Camp. So yeah, I forgot Eat a Golden Corral was on my bucket list. We'll check that off next week. Mm -hmm. That's right. Next Monday. Which by the way, is it Monday or Tuesday? I think we changed it back to Did we change it back to Monday? I'm going to murder uh, all of you. Let me check the calendar. <laughs> Tuesday. Well, no, we were it was a moon schedule that was the wacky one. Yes, it was my schedule that was the wacky one. It was supposed to be on my gotcha day. Well, but I thought we were also kind of celebrating Jeff. Um, let's see. You know what? Just tell me what to do, know. guys. Well, you're the one that's Tuesday. You're the one that was the it was the uh, weird schedule. Well, yes, but remember, I also said, hey, I think that's open if we want to switch it back. Uh, well, so what day works better for everybody? Next Monday or Tuesday? I'm open either day. Well, let's go over while well, we're checking schedules. Let's go over your bucket list, okay? And I, I'm gonna give you a little mini interview of what. Some of these things are and how they might be accomplished. Okay, go ahead. Riz, I had each member of the cast give twelve, at least 12 items they want checked off their bucket list. Now, some of these things are a little pie in the sky. They're going to be hard to achieve. Right. Maybe listeners can help. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe sponsors can, I don't know. Uh, these some of these are all things, the things that we've all dreamed of doing. Yes, and some of them are very achievable, and we're going to make it happen. Okay. On your birthday, we're going to knock a few off of these, I'm telling you. Number one on Riz's bucket list you want to drop kick someone. Yes, I was a big fan of the video game Double Dragon. Yeah. Yes. Tight. And <laughs> so you know you're talking, I'm talking about, about the full the full side side drop kick. Yeah. Chest chest head area. Yes. I listen. I'm almost 200 pounds. I ain't getting up to head level. Chest to abdomen. Never know. Level. Maybe yeah, maybe crotch to, to <laughs> Ab abdomen. Where's your solar plexus? Is well, that uh, uh We'll start with that one because I got good news for you on that one. I talked to J.P. Warhorse, and Wednesday, after our program... Tomorrow? Tomorrow after our program, I'm taking you down to Glory Pro's wrestling school, and they're going to teach you how to drop kick. How to properly drop kick somebody. So that when the time comes, you'll be ready. And that time will come soon, my friend. He did say you have to get knee pads and elbow pads. By tomorrow. By tomorrow. I don't know how to achieve where that. Hell? Scott, where do you get your knee pads at? I buy all mine over at, you can get them at any sporting goods store pretty much. Okay. His exact words were, uh, let's see what he said. Ah, oh, hell, I don't know. So knee pads. Where am I going to get knee pads? Low. And Just swing by, there's, don't you live close to a, the dicks out there? Dicks. He, he said proper gym attire, preferably amateur wrestling shoes and converse or converse and knee and elbow pads. And I said, it's proper wrestling attire. I said, where the hell do we get Stretching near elbow stuff. pads by Wednesday? And he said, Dick Sporting Goods works. Look for volleyball pads or anything that's soft. Okay, all right. So a I have thick a thick cushion. I have a Dick's right by the house. Please show up in some sort of spandex. Yeah. Like a singlet? Yes. Yeah, you need your oh, underwear on the outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With the knee pads on the inside of the Ooh, spandex. What's, yeah, what's wrestling daddy. attire? You got to paint your face up. I don't know, man. We'll just dress like the Hulkster and you'll be fine. You Better ask wig. somebody in Dick Sporting Goods. I Excuse bet they me, sir, I'm uh, looking to drop kick somebody uh, Well, soon. just show up in a gi. You want to go double dragon? Go full double dragon, right. dude. Yeah. I do have a gi. Well, I was going to say, we both have gis. There you go. Show up in a gi, like Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, with some <laughs> knee pads on underneath or over. It's funnier if it's on over the gi. Uh-huh. So it's like really getting held down. And, yeah. Uh, so tomorrow, we're getting started on that one tomorrow. All right. You're going to learn to drop kick someone thanks to the, the boys down at Glory Pro. Oh, thank you. And, that, and tomorrow, love Love War Horse and uh, yeah, great dude. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna train how to drop kick somebody. You're properly. gonna train how to drop kick someone properly. I'm guessing that will be War Horse. Hopefully not me, but we'll see. <laughs> well, you know, I told the boss that uh, you know drop kicking somebody was on my bucket list. He goes, "You're not gonna drop kick nobody." <laughs> oh. Because you're not drop kicking nobody, and you're gonna get hurt doing it. What? <laughs> You'll be fine. You know what? He's wrong. You're not going to get hurt doing it, and you are going to do it. You're going to do it in a and very I'm public venue. And I'm going to do it the right way. You yes. are. 
You're going to have good form, good drop kick. Ideally, what I would like to do, and I'm putting this out there, is uh, I think you should drop kick someone at your birthday bash on stage. Yep. Maybe I me. would love to. What I would like, is there a police department out there that will loan me one of them dog bite suits? <laughs> yes. And I'll just get in a full dog bite suit. You can give me a full force drop kick at your birthday bash as my birthday present to you. I'll let you drop kick me oh, in front of so all sweet. of your friends and family. Your Way mother's to sacrifice in town. Sacrifice your body. My my mom's here. Yeah. Okay. Or if not, King Scott. If yeah, the suit doesn't you that fit too. me, if you're we'll okay just, with it, buddy. We'll slap it. Or, or me. Like we'll throw our hat in. I'm we'll draw straws. Kicking. I'm not drop kicking a woman. Oh no, no, not your choice. We're all equal on this show. I'm not drop kicking right. a woman. Drop kick. Learn for equality. <laughs> I'd like uh, to. For women's rights. Thank you. I'm going to do it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. a woman for women's equal rights. Equal rights, equal. Yeah. Plus, equal she's the short. Rights, you got a better baby. chance of getting up to her chest That's than right. any of ours. She's five foot one, for the love of God. Okay. All right. Drop kick somebody. Drop kick somebody. We're working on that one. Second on your list was get in a food fight. Yeah. That's animal, a, like uh, Animal House style. You want a full on, you want a full on food fight. I would, I would like to have one. Hmm. We Which can make, would be I, a golden I, corral. Could be. Yeah, I don't think they'd yeah, we appreciate could, we could that. Knock two out right there. Well, those tend to happen. <laughs> those tend to happen organically. Yeah, at Golden Corrals. I've every seen. Time, maybe we'll get lucky. Wait, those are literal think, fights. Every time I think of food fights, I think either like the old school. You know, I, I couldn't think of a movie right now, but like in a cafeteria, <laughs> you know, school style with the spoons yeah. and they're slinging Animal mashed house. potatoes. But I also, I've always wanted to recreate the hook one. Remember, like where oh, everything's oh, like multicolored, yeah. like the mashed potatoes are like tie-dyed. Yeah. Golly. Then we, you know, like w maybe we wouldn't waste as much food. We could have some like pain in there. We could have some like all sorts of different colors. All right, here we go things. with the food wasting. I know oh, we have a buzzkill over here. Hey. <laughs> no, I'm down. So get in a food fight. <laughs> We're going to figure that one out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people in the chat right now telling us where to get knee pads, and I want you guys to know that chat does disappear. So, if you got a good line on some knee pads or something like that, feel free to send it through the instant feedback where we where it'll live forever. Academy Sports. And hey, Academy. Vinny's saying Tommy the boss better step up and take the drop kick. So yeah, I yeah. can't do it. Oh no! <laughs> step up, Tommy. Tommy, do it for the love of the game. Yes. <laughs> take one. Two forty year old, forty plus year old guys. He's fifty. Living it. Oh yeah. You're even better, man. <laughs> You're as young as you feel, bud. Don't You're as young as you feel. Just don't tell anyone at corporate. So getting a food fight was two. We're going to work on that. That one's going to be a little tougher, but we're going to figure that out. Number three on Riz's list was drive a Zamboni. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got an in on that, so we could get that done. You think you can get that done? Oh, yeah. No people down at the uh, Maryville uh, Ice Rink. Okay. Cool. Uh, if anybody else would like to uh, step on up and say, hey, come on down to our ice rink, I'd, I'd be willing to listen. All right. Whew. Do you want to act? How long? Do you want to actually like do the whole rink, or do you just want to drive it for a minute? Oh, he no, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, to do the job. I'd like to do the entire. That's what I'm saying. Ice surface. Whoa. Okay. Like, what does what does it consist of? That's why I want to enter. That's why I'm asking you these questions. Like, like I, I don't does... want to do a stripe. I want to do the yeah. entire. There's a pattern, yeah. and you got to learn the pattern first. They're gonna have to walk you through it. What if you did Riz on that? No, I want to do it. Oh. Do you know how hard that would be? To write your I name, don't know. To write my name. It's, it's a very complicated name. Like, how would it look? It's not like done. urinating in the snow. I, I don't know how that happens either. You could practice with a tractor, a brush hog out at your, out at your Yeah, I mean, I could, I, could br I could brush hog with the best of them. But riding the Zamboni, like, there's something so relaxing. Yes. I know, to, to me, about a dirty ice surface and the Zamboni rolling out. Just melts and, it? And just, just the clear... Mm -hmm. That little thin layer of water that freezes, mm -hmm. and just the ice is so pristine, Placid. pristine and nice. And the you know they're going around and around. Yes. And I'm yelling, "You missed a spot!" And they're going, "Shut the hell up! You get up here and do it." Yes. Said, I'll do it. I'll fine. do it. <clears throat> just kidding! You're not allowed to do it. Are you not allowed? You have to have a license. Is that to your do real it? fantasy? Is that <laughs> some Zamboni driver? Like the Zamboni driver. <laughs> Passed out. The game's canceled, and you're like, hold on. I got this. I've done this before. Is there a Zamboni driver here? Yes. <laughs> on the plane. <laughs> Is there a Zamboni driver on this plane? Yeah, the actual Zamboni driver, I don't know, he, he has food poisoning. Yeah. And um, the big tournament's going on. We and the skate. kids need to get, the kids need to skate. The, 
Is there? Oh my God! The Z Carl, the Zamboni guy. He's he can't. broke his leg. He broke his leg. He's terribly ill. There's an ambulance on the way. Is there a Zamboni driver here? Does anybody know how to operate a Zamboni? And one hero stands up and says, "I know how to drive a Zamboni." Yeah, I am. And that, that song man. comes on. <laughs> bom, 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 bom. And I hop bom, on bom, and bom, I bom, clear bom. the ice. Yeah, that'd be tight. <laughs> what a dream! Now I'm excited for the driver. I Zamboni. clear the ice. Hey, and when I'm something. done, when I drive off, they go, this is the best Zambonying we've ever seen. Wow. What song should be playing while you're up there? Jam on it, but we'll say Zamboni. Remember that song? Uh-uh. Jam on it. Jam on oh, it. Yeah. J -j 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 -jam on it. Zamboni. Zamboni. That'd be tight, dude. That's got a nice little backbeat to it, too. <laughs> I didn't know uh, I didn't know such song existed, but okay. Well, look up Jam On It. It was one of the biggest breakdancing songs of the 1980s. Well, I know Jam On It. I don't know they was uh, they name checked Zamboni in it, but well, what well, else? What else we got on this list? We got jump in a taxi and say follow that car. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Where's this come from? Just you always right. wanted to oh, do it. Oh, it's you know the uh, the old the old movies. Yeah, yeah. it's a cop. You're gonna have like, to set that up because you know most taxi drivers are like. uh... I need an address. Click. And then they start, yeah. they start the thing. And it's, it's always like a, a few-second process. Follow that car. Can I? Is Visa or MasterCard? <laughs> <laughs> right. Follow that car. Uh, I'm going to need to see your ID. Yeah, the old, you know, the old you know, cops and robbers action flicks. Does Let me ask Uber you this. Count? Does it have to be a taxi? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Could it, it be an Uber? Yeah. <laughs> Could it be... Uh, I did have someone reach out and say... They had a General Lee and a Roscoe P. Coltrane Sheriff's car, and they would be willing to let me live out my General Lee going through the door fantasy, and you could hop in the Sheriff's car and say, that's follow awesome. that car. Would that that somebody would have to be driving, and I have to hop in the back seat. Okay, that's all. That if you need a Bosco, I know a guy. Okay. Yeah. So we've got... That could happen. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be a ta like a yellow taxi. It's person. more about it would just be cool, right? You just want to hop in a car and see yeah, follow sure. that car. Does All it right. need to be parked like in a city street? You know what I'm saying? Oh like, yeah. Can it just be out here? I would have to be standing, and the car kind of screeched to a halt in front of me. And you would hop in and go follow that car. You got to okay. also show your ID that you're like a flash a badge yeah. or something. Yeah, that would. Yeah, be. I could do that because cops can do that legally. I'm commandeering this vehicle. Yeah, yeah, that does sound fun. <laughs> If I was Can a cop, I would really do that do all that, the time. By the way? I'd get fired for it because it'd be so much Can fun. you really commandeer a vehicle? Out of the car. I don't know. You see it in the movies a lot. If they flash a badge like push someone out of their car. It's got to be real. Yes, police officers have the right to take your car if they need to. Now, what if they get into an accident? Who's this liable? Is, um, oh, I'm sure the city will just write you a check. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, that easy, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, no, no paperwork. No. No red tape there. They would be liable. Uh, they usually just write your check right on the spot. Yeah. Again, this is just fast Googling. They would be liable for the damages they cause while using it. What about my what Fabergé about egg I keep in the trunk? What yes. about the gas? Sir, you do not have yeah, a Fabergé gas egg. gas is expensive. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, because I, I had read that, um, let's say, there is a hostage standoff mm -hmm. in front of a, uh, in a house, mm -hmm. and your car happens to be parked in front of the house. And, then and they use your car as kind of like a staging... Uh, Shield? You know, whatever. Yeah. They don't have to pay crap. Mm. Like, sorry. Huh. Wrong place, wrong time. That's interesting. I mean, you would think the city would have to pay. Somehow. <clears throat> like, if not just the police, but like the city would have to pay for that damage. Hmm. Like, if your car gets shot up or something and they're <laughs> behind, like, having a shootout. What if they, you know, kick open a door, wrong house? Oh, no. Who pays for the door? I don't know. Don't know. Seems I, like the city should definitely like pay for that. Seems like the city should, but... If I see somebody but, hiding behind my car, and I'm going to be like, hey, 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 use the neighbor's let car. Let me move it. Let me move it. Hide behind that guy. I can't find my keys. <laughs> let me just move the car. Okay, so, ah, you know what would have been cool to put on the list, and maybe we could add to it. You can add to it. Kick down a door. Okay. Let's add it Dang. on. I'm Kick putting it in right now, door. right after <laughs> following that car. <laughs> You basically just like you're an 11 year old wanting to do the move. A lot of kicking. <laughs> you're gonna need a hollow door. A lot of kicking on your list. Like Just a some wooden good boots. door. You yeah. Know? Like kick it in. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to uh, have been recovered from your. A lot of kicking, dude. Like your your yeah. double kick. Your... Well, these are all like uh, you know. I want to live out like an action movie. Yeah. Kick down a door has officially been added. To Riz's kick bucket down list. or open. Kick open or down. <laughs> See now, if you really wanted to do this, you kick down a door, run, and you drop kick somebody. Mm.
Yeah. Yeah, get it just all out of the you, way. You, you, you follow that car, and then it comes to a screeching halt. It hasn't even stopped. You're straight. out of that door. You run straight up to the house, and bam, bam. he kicked the door in, and then you... Drop kick the perpetrator. That's right. At a golden corral. Yeah. At a <laughs> Start a food fight in the process. And then, you out know, of nowhere, spray champagne on a crowd, which is your next bonus. Oh, yeah. Fight. yeah. I've always wanted to do like a, like a champagne celebration. Pit bull, yeah. So we think this is a loose plan at this point, but I think we can make this happen at your birthday, too. I think after the show, we put you on top of a point van. We get volunteers, RIS team members to come out. Whoever's cool with getting sprayed with champagne surrounds the van. We just give you a case of champagne. I'll keep handing it up. Oh, that'd be awesome. You spray oh, everybody. Man. Love that. Dang. Have you ever done that? Do a photo op after with uh, everybody all soaked in champagne. Like with the big, you know, with the big know. magnums of champagne. Like uh, like after winning a Formula One race. Yeah. yeah. he's. Uh, I know he successfully hit the cap on somebody before. Oh, dude, yeah. I went to open one and I... <laughs> The, the the top, you know, the cork went yeah. flying out and hit my wife square in the ear, dude. Oh, it was the worst. Oh, I put an eye out. Oh, dude, I know. I almost That's killed That's why he's not drinking shoot now. your ear out. I still, I, I still feel so bad. Still I'm, got a ring in her ear, I'm huh? so bummed uh, that I'm going to be missing all this stuff. You're going to be pulling off No, we'll, we're going to video it. Well, yeah, I know, but I just, I wish I was there. Want us to FaceTime We you. wish you were there. We're uh, bummed. I'll be I know on you're stage. playing with the dirt bags. Yeah, we'll be down uh, at we'll ball one day. We'll FaceTime you in. We could, like, show up at his concert and dropkick him on... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, do it during the, the alternative set. Out of nowhere. Set, out that's of nowhere. Bird's just, just shredding on a guitar and gets <laughs> dropkicked from the side. <laughs> that yeah, would be great. Chris, happy birthday. And just right, just... Right. Double. Hey, man, we missed you at the... <laughs> I'd feel great to be a part of things. That would be awesome. That would love. That'd be lovely. So kick right. down a door, spray champagne on the crowd. We're going to make that happen at your birthday. You got hide and seek in an Ikea. That's going to be a taller order. Well, yeah, we have to. Get and, that and it can't just be at any furniture store. has to be Ikea. It's got to be Ikea. That, is a, that does sound super fun. Yeah, that's a great idea. It has to be like an after hours thing, right? Or do you want to do it during hours? I mean, during, yeah. uh, during hours, we could pull that off. Without asking. Right. Without asking. Yeah. After hours, like maybe while the staff is like cleaning, like right after they shut the doors, we can just hang out for do a 30 minute. Yeah. Ikea. 30 minutes. All we need. Is the move to high. ask and then if denied, go do it anyway on hours? Yeah. Or is the move yeah. to just go do it? Yes. Just go do it? No, no, no. Ask. Find a way to contact the manager <laughs> at Ikea and say, look, we just have this fun thing. It's going to be great promotion for Ikea. Because Ikea needs promotion. Exactly. Yeah. Their meatballs do all the promoting for them. I know. That's true. Those are so good meatballs. No, if we've never had, had I've never dude, had. breakfast at Ikea is like two bucks. It's all college students on Sundays if you go in there. Because it's like, they serve you like a full breakfast for nothing. Yeah. A couple bucks. And it's always like slew students in there just going ham on. It's their good golden corral. Have you, you, you've all been to, to, oh, to oh, Ikea? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars at Ikea. I mean, it's, it's the way they got that store organized. With the even the the arrows on the floor, go mm. this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need yeah. a shortcut. Go this way. When they first opened up, we uh, we went. I think we went as a show, but you you didn't get to go. And we went uh, for for meals just to check out the meals. And we tried all sorts of different food, all oh, yeah. different good desserts. That was good. That was, was great, dude. Good. Dollar ice cream cones. Dollar ice cream cones. So yeah, I, I would like to ask for permission. Yeah, like, well, I'd like to do everything on the up. Just remember, Bass Pro yeah. was willing to let us stay all night and play. Yep. So if we can pull that off, and that seems a little more yeah, sophisticated yeah. of a, sh a shop than Ikea. <clears throat> what are you saying about Ikea? Nothing, but they don't have <laughs> living animals in there and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, Living animals and, you know, like the uh, the the backwoods electric bikes. Remember yeah. we were racing those? With Man. weapons and all kinds of fun things. <laughs> they don't have all that jet cool skis. stuff in there, so. No jet skis safer. at Ikea. Can you imagine? I mean, a, a hide-and-seek at Ikea would be great. It, it would, would be, be amazing. So much fun. It would be so much fun. Yeah. would be fun. Like, where's Scott? Oh, he's hiding in that Jurgen Flurgen or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> That's a great Scott. spot. We'll give that away. That was our old Get point. out of that Jurgen Flurgen. <laughs> oh, man. Why'd you tell him my He's everything Swedish. Uh, now he's in the Floppenheimer. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, next one, another door related, <laughs> a lot of door and kick related ones. Block a door and require a password to get in. You've always wanted to do yeah, that. I've always wanted to do You're that. talking like speakeasy situation? Yeah. The little slider thing? Yeah, you yeah. got to find one with the eye slider. Yeah. I think there's one. You ever heard of the Thaxton? You ever been to the Thaxton? No, no. I think they I don't do. Know the password. I never got in. I think they do that there. And maybe somebody from the Thaxton's listening. Maybe we can make that happen. Bless you twice. Bless you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'd love to do that. 
Okay. Uh, Is it no. just once? You just want to do it? You just no, it maybe be like the door guy for like... An hour? Yeah, an hour or so. But not tell anybody mm -hmm. this. It's a bit. Just be like, hey, man, what's the password? Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, you could really block a door and require a password sure. anywhere mm -hmm. you wanted. And yeah, even for the studio, what's the password? But... It'd be but cool if you had, like, like speak, the, yeah, having the little sliding door, like the gorilla in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. That'd be tight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can work on that one. And you I just feel see like the eyes. You just see my eyes. <clears throat> What's yeah. the password? Yeah, the eye door. That's what you want. Okay. So yeah. if anybody's got an, an eye door speakeasy situation, let us know. Listen, and this is... It has to be the wrong password, though. And you have to go, clink. Yeah. Yeah. Shut <laughs> <laughs> Listen, again, my, for my bucket list, you know, there are things that are small and things that are big. There are. It's a small one. It's a yeah. small one, but it's doable. Uh, crash a wedding and give a toast? Yes, I, I've always wanted to do that. Just a random, yeah. a random wedding. Yeah, this is something that I think the listeners who are getting married in the next year. Well, Scott did it. Yeah. Scott no, did it as a punishment. What I think would make it easy on you, though, oh, is... Oh, man. People, like, listeners should submit... And say, like, hey, I'm getting married November 1st of this year. We would love it if you came and crashed. But you would not say if you were going to do it. But they would give you the location and all the details. That would be fun. And then you would just be able to pick whichever works for you. In and the I future just show up. And just show up and do it. And that's okay? Wait. Awesome. Yeah, that and count? just wait for the point of, yeah. uh, you know, the speeches and kind of commandeer the mic. Yes. You Scott, just walk up. Scott did a... He crashed a wedding and did a five-minute best man speech where that. he talked about meeting the groom in jail. And, oh man! And, and then no one knew he was coming. The bride and groom did. It was the, the worst, best did. man speech. Dude, it was. It was for a punishment. It and was I in, couldn't know anything about him other than his name. And it was. That's awesome. It was cringy, incredible, like in the best of ways. And then right at five minutes, he goes, uh, "And uh, well, that's my time." And <laughs> he just <bailed. laughs> did you guys he just all walk go out of the wedding? wedding? No, he just he went. Oh my and the, god! It, it, it's even better. He they said something like Washington, and he went down to Washington Avenue, and then it ended up being Washington, Missouri. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's our Scott. Oh boy! And then went out there, and then did it in full cowboy outfit. Did you stay after for the wedding? No, it was uh, the wedding already happened. This Why did you stay uh, for the reception? No, no, no. I, I got. I didn't want to. I already screwed it up enough for him. I didn't want to mess it up more. <laughs> Man. But they, they were so loved, nice. They would have loved to have had you. Yeah, they were nice, and it was yeah, incredible. They were so they nice. That. I did comedy at a wedding one time, and the bride and groom did not put it on the itinerary. And it was like super loud in a 400 person reception hall, and they forgot the sound system. So I had one PA, only two tables could hear me. And it literally looked like someone's drunk uncle giving the longest speech. Like, some, people did not know what it was going on. <laughs> the bride and groom were awesome, but it was like, I did 45 minutes. <laughs> they had to be like, Whose uncle is this? 45 minutes. Oh my God. Oh dude, my yes. God. Yeah. In a suit. Just up there trying to sell my. I had a five minutes. I had of, one table full of single ants, loving everything I was doing. Oh they were having God, the best what a time. Terrible idea. Well, it just things did not come together well. It wasn't their fault. Like they were supposed to have the state of the art surround sound. It didn't come in, so they had one PA. Even the best man speeches were like, "I've known Terry since he was eight years old." They were garbled, and people quiet down for the best man speech. No one cares. They had me in front of the DJ booth, just like. I was trying to sell it as hard as I could. You know why it brings up a great point. We may, as far as the crashing a wedding, why it says that's not crashing; it's being invited. Yeah. What? With but my no, idea? they're not. Yeah. But if they they're don't not, know you're coming, but they no, but you're not going to tell anybody. So you could have would twenty it still people count as crashing. It would. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it would. Still so, and, and here's the thing: there might just be one listener out of that couple. Maybe the wife is the listener, <coughs> the bride. Husband has wow. no idea. And I'm not staying. I'm just going to leave. You're, yeah, you're just crashing it, doing the I'm speech. I'm doing my speech out. and leaving. Yeah, you go the other way. That's a rocky way to start your marriage. You have a husband invite you and don't tell the wife to her wedding to crash and give a speech. That's a whew, ballsy move. Okay, if I really want to kick it up a notch, yeah. I'm going to have you write my speech. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a I love that. Oh, punch it up. Punch it up. Punch up, up my speech. I guaranteed laughs. Yes. Punch up my speech. By I'm me. Just, I'll give it, I'll give the speech as written by Rafe with nobody knowing. That's hilarious. Do it. Put it down. Put Love it. it. Next. Write it. I just added, written by and not seen by you until given. Yep. Oh, like yes. I open up the envelope, envelope and have to read. Yes. Great. If we really want to get the adrenaline going. <laughs> What's in this That's what envelope? all this is. These are rushes. This is like yeah. an endorphin rush. Yeah. You're a uh, adrenaline junkie.
It's what you are. Without, yeah, without jumping out of a plane. With unseen speech is what I'm putting down yeah, now. Do. Good. Love it. Do it. <clears throat> All right. Eat a Golden Corral. We'll do that next Tuesday. We're going to check that off early. That's going to be the first one off the list. Now we're getting to a couple big ones. A 10 Daytona 500. I, yeah, I know that's a lofty. That's not out of. It's not that's out of. A, that's it's drivable. Easy. It's not like you're, you're not trying to go, you know, to Mount Kilimanjaro. It's Daytona 500. It's a drivable trip. Sure. <clears throat> Both in Florida. That could happen. Uh, attend the Kentucky Derby, even more drivable. Has, any, has anybody been to the Kentucky Derby? I no. have been. <clears throat> you did the infield, right? But I did the infield, and that's a whole different party. That's a whole different thing. Do you want to go to the fancy part? Or do you want to go to the infield with your people? Because <laughs> your people, they're on the inside of the track. They're rolling around in the mud. They're drinking mint juleps still. But they're wearing NASCAR shirts. You know what I mean? They're yeah. not wearing funny hats. They're wearing... Where would I be better off, Moon, you think, on the infield? Man, I don't know. Yeah, it's the infield. The old the old you, definitely the infield. But this this new Riz, uh, you're... you're what know. is I this old and new? Can I just say, I like, may want to go fancy pants. This? Is he new? Like, I feel like you... I kind of want to dress you up. Can we Are put you... you in one of those big hats? Have you changed so much since Rafe and I joined the show that you're like a no. new guy? Yeah. No, but the last couple of years, I would say. I've I mean, evolved. This, this... Have you evolved? I have. Okay. I've matured. He's a I think it was the man. dogs. They softened him. It's He's a, a mature dude. man. All right. I'm different. a bit softer, yes. Okay, I think you should go wherever Dax Shepard would go at the Kentucky Derby. That's He's a, not going to the infield. What made that reference? I don't know. I just feel like he's a good gauge. Of like He's a good not time. going to the infield. He's going to the... I just I want to put Shepherd you in a big wants, hat. I think Dax Shepard wants you to think he's going to be on the infield. Oh. Dude, well, I want to take gonna you... He's going to be up with, the, with Tom Brady. Mm. Yeah, you're right. And I also, I just want to take you to like Levine's Hat Shop downtown and have him make you a custom Kentucky Derby hat mm. for you to wear. Because that's what you really want. We want to put you in like a velvet suit and a big hat. That's what you really want. I think, honestly, man. I can see it in your eyes. Yeah, I think I think you kind of yeah. want to be, I think you want to be photographed in the stands with a hat. <clears throat> with a mint you. I want to be overlooking the infield Cretans. Yes. Pinky I, ring. I, I, I kind of <laughs> feel like Ascot. the new Riz is that, that's what you want. I see you on the ground level with the Hoosiers. But I will tell you. Hmm. I mean. Going to be a lot of bow ties up in that stance. You're going to have to face your fears if you go up there. Going to be a lot of dudes in bow ties. We'll put you in an ascot, keep you comfortable. We don't want anything too tight. Okay. All right. Spe speaking of all the changes, uh, months ago, we must have had something in February. Because uh, I had a reminder come up last <clears throat> night at 6 p.m. that said, how many times has Riz gone to the bathroom outside of his home since February 6th? Like number two? I don't know. This is just what this, this said. He was keeping a log. You we, had a we, note. We, <laughs> we, yeah, I had a note that said, like, check in on this on the show <laughs> on this date. I forgot that's I was it. supposed to be keeping How track. Did, maybe, and maybe that's what, what this was. <laughs> maybe you said, like, I'd never go to the bathroom outside of my house. Maybe it was one of those things. And we said, fine, you know what, we'll ask you in six months. I think may, maybe, so in six months, of like going number two outside the house, aside, of work, aside from a work situation? Yeah. Yep. Maybe once or twice. Maybe once or maybe. twice is the answer. Now, uh, maybe. I, I think that I can't remember. Mm. I think it's somewhat relevant to the conversation because I got a feeling the infield bathrooms are quite different than the stand bathrooms. Yes. And I think the new <laughs> Riz, I think, it. and I think the new Riz is a bit more concerned about the restroom scenario. Yeah. If he's going to the Kentucky Derby or the Daytona, I mean, I, I've been to a lot of races. Never you definitely been ain't gonna Derby. like the infield situation because it's porter potties. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll I'll be with the fancy folks. And you got to okay. you got to slide fancy, in the mud all the way. Put me to with the, the fancy folks. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. There's Same with the Daytona yeah. 500. Is, put me with the fancy folks. There's people like banging in pop up tents in the infield. It's a wild party in there. They yeah. don't point the cameras inward for a reason. It's nuts in there. It's like uh, it's like Sturgis on the infield. Oh, the new Riz <clears> is <throat> Queens and Hamptons. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's, I, that's, oh, I don't. I mean, Hamptons I, Riz. I have no idea. This is Hamptons Riz is what we're dealing with now. I think. Well, we're, I don't yeah, think we're, we're dealing with Hamptons Riz. Well, we're damn near. I want oh, yeah. Riz. We're, yeah. Da we're damn near there. The Queen will be on the infield. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I have a red carpet rolled out for you to walk into the stands of the Kentucky Derby. Uh, important question: We're betting on a horse at the Derby. You bet your ass we are. Oh, hell yeah, wow. dude. You bet your ass we are. Uh, let's see. You got three left. First pitch redemption. Now this. Harkens back to a day that 
you got to throw out the first pitch at Bush Stadium and you sailed 13, wide. 13 years ago this month, I got the opportunity to throw out a first pitch at Bush Stadium mm -hmm. and I sailed it. And hit, I, you hit someone in the color guard. I think I hit the, I made the color guard scatter. <laughs> I mean, I really, really threw it high. I mean, mm. just. Your parents came in. My parents were in. Oh, no. Uh, it was my, one of the last things. My father wound up passing away two weeks later. <laughs> what? Gosh. That's Not funny. because of the pitch. I was going to say. But it was one of the last <laughs> moments I was going to say, was he in the color guard? The, yeah, the, the pitch was so bad, it killed my father. <laughs> 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 Shame, poor guy. Um, no, this, I, I just will never forget. You know, going down to Bush Stadium. It was when it was the old Woody and Rich show, and uh, I wasn't nervous. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have been nervous. But I, I wound up seeing myself on the big screen, the big uh, jumbotron at center field, and that's when I. That's when it hit me. It was mm. a sold out. Sold out fr uh, Friday night game. Dang. And we were the yeah, like my, we were the first pitches before the teams took the field. Thirteen years ago, what year would that have been? Twenty, twenty ten. So that was they were good because we won twenty eleven. We won oh, the yeah. series, right? It was, right? A, it was <laughs> we're playing the Giants. It was uh, August twentieth, twenty ten, and my parents came into town. My my son was. A little over a year old. I remember him eating the dirt and oh. a face full of red. And I said, man, I sailed that pitch. I, I I took to the top of the mound. I wound up. I threw it. I heard 60,000 people go, ooh. ooh 60,000. <laughs> Arrowhead was there ooh. watching. Ooh. <laughs> They had I, it. I don't know what the attendance They were broadcasting like it at, <laughs> simultaneously, simulcast at Arrowhead Stadium. Ooh. <laughs> Well, and my, my father put his arm around me and said, that's my boy. Oh, oh, right. I think we go full in on this. I think you get a first pitch redemption. We dress someone up as your father to sit oh. in the <laughs> to sit in the stands. Yeah. Yes. There's these organizations where if you like we if hire you, an actor, <laughs> if your dad won't like come to your wedding, you can hire a dad. We hire a dad. Rent yeah. a kid, rent a dad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. tr a true story. So uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> This is an absolutely true story. A couple of years ago, do you remember um, they asked my son to be, it was right before the Blues were were, uh, were going to be in the playoffs. They did a video where uh, my son was like the, the Blues kids captain. And they did a whole video. And they said, oh, you know, it's going to be father and son. And uh, it's going to be, you know, dad lacing up his skates. Oh, yeah. Putting on the soccer jersey. And he's going to he's going to skate out and he's going to have the... The, uh, he's going to be holding the St. Louis Blues flag, and he's going to skate around, and then you know the Blues players are going to come out. So it's the video of him skating out that it's going to cut to the Blues players, actually. So I got there, and they had a fake dad. Not me. Uh. <laughs> they hired another dad for your son. <laughs> Man. I wow. had fully thought it was going to be me. <laughs> and I got to, to, to Enterprise Center, and I'm like, all right, where you know, where are we doing where this? And me. they ha who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Who is this guy? They you got recast. I got recast. In your own show, dude. I said, son. That's like every comedian. This is gonna nightmare. be your dad for the next couple hours. Right. Well, even worse, he probably never was <clears throat> cast. Yeah, you're right. That's like every comedian's nightmare is you develop a show and then they're like, We love everything about it. But we want a different actor to play you. That's what it was. It's happened to Bill Burr. It's happened said, to some of the greats. You could uh, you could take some pictures if you want. Oh, okay. Let me ask you this. Be honest. Was New Dad hotter? Way hotter. Dang. Oh, Way hotter. man. That's Way even hotter. worse. New Dad, Way hotter. New Dad was actually King Scott. Yeah. And I'm still in his son's life. New Dad was John Hamm. <laughs> oh. I'll show you a picture. Sam Hamm. Ham Sam. Um, I'll show you a picture. Because I did oh, take you got new dad? That's I did. I did wind up taking pictures. I'll be the and they, judge they, of who's hotter. They use that video everywhere. It was, it was a big video. Remember they played that at, uh, at the games? It's like in commercials. <clears throat> yeah, they played it a lot of places. This white-haired dude's hot dad? Yeah. See. Hang on, let me zoom in. Was he on the, He's the, a the bike fox. ride? He's yeah, a silver let's fox. See, let's see him. There's a couple pictures. You could, you could scroll. But no way. They also made you older. Like yeah, like it almost looks like grandpa. They made you older and hotter. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, dude. You know who he looks like? He looks like the Travago guy. He looks like the dude. Let's do a little camera. He looks like the guy. Gosh. House of Cards. The guy that's like her confidant in House of Cards. He's in, what else is he in? I'm going to look this up. I got recast. He looks just like that guy. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got recast as my, uh, my own son's dad. Dang it. <laughs> Dang, That's dude. awesome. Was that your son's request, though? You know what? <laughs> what about yeah, what Listen to this. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dude. Here's the deal. We're getting that guy <laughs> to be your dad. Yeah. Oh, Bush Stadium. Yeah. He's, we're hiring that actor. Yeah. This is the guy. Come to Bush. We're going to dress him up, sit him next to your mom. You're going to have your moment. Daddy Inception. You guys. I have like a first pitch thing, too. We're going to find out as we reveal these throughout the week, you're going to find out there are some overlaps. Mm hmm. Which is going to be fun. All right, so first person redemption. <laughs> it's got to be a bush, though. Yeah. It's got to be a bush. It's got to be a bush. It's got to be a bush. I did throw out a first pitch in a Speedo over where the uh, Grizzlies play. Oh, yeah. Which is great. Which, Steve Reich nailed that one. See? Yeah. Maybe, Maybe just I just need to be in a Speedo. Clothes, right. Yeah. No Jumbotron. Right? Yeah. No Jumbotron. He had a Microtron. That I, wind up, uh, running the <laughs> <laughs> I wind up running the bases on that one. Nice. Okay. All right, two more. One, break a guitar on stage. Very doable. Awesome. Have you ever broke a guitar, like smashed a guitar on stage? He <laughs> shattered it. Oh, on accident. <laughs> no, on purpose, like, like um, the Who style. No, nah, I've, I've been in bands where, where other members have done that, and it's never as cool as you think it is. Um, what? Never and breaks where you want it to. It hurt? Never breaks where you want it to, and yes, I think he got hurt, and a big chunk went flying into the crowd once, and it was like, oh, no! So you it, know, was, it was kind of dangerous. You know who has a cool guitar bust? And I know that you have mixed feelings, but Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks has the best ones. Because they do the double where they hit them into each other. Double oh, acoustics. Yeah. Double I'll acoustics. Swing, two acoustics and pow, they explode. That was that was one of the moments that changed my life in 91 when I saw that. When they first did that, I went, oh my gosh, you can smash guitars? I'd, I mean, I mean pff, mind blown. Mind blown. Yeah, you watch like Pete Townsend do it. Yeah, uh, you know, Kurt Cobain would you know would break his guitar. So it always looks so cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want hey, that lot, one? Do you want to hit it on the ground break, or do you want the two guitars getting smashed simultaneously? I feel the two guitars smashing simultaneously is more dangerous. Hey, mm -hmm. hate to hate to break to see it, but a lot of times when that's like a planned thing, they will be cut. Oh in, yeah, in, in oh the yeah, yeah, it's show, you know, showbiz. Yeah, so so it like breaks where you want it to, and it looks cool and whatever. Oh so yeah, we full, have to do that. I, I don't dude, want you I'm breaking your hands, man. You can hurt yourself. Whatever man. looks cool. <laughs> That's right. awesome. Ideally, it would be, hey, yeah. let's let's you know, let me jump <clears throat> up with you. At a show. At a show, and then when my song is over, we smash the guitar. Yes, okay. got, a, got a bunch of them coming. Ooh, we're we could, we're announcing one next week. Ooh, we could do that in Halloween. Okay. I thought oh, you were going to try to pull this off on your birthday, but I like that idea better. I like you actually playing. Like yeah. the actual playing. Yeah, you got to play it and then just play. And then like, hey, that's how you exit the stage. That's how you leave a stage. Right. All right. Well, we'll work on that. Sounds like we got a good line on that one. And your final bucket list item. As of right now, these are malleable lists and always changing. Eat your way through Europe. <laughs> metaphorically, question mark. Pasta house or Olive Garden? Question mark. I mean, they, Olive Garden does have the tour of Italy. <laughs> so that's nice true. Have so, I mean, <laughs> hey, just that's true. I know this might come as a shock, but Europe is bigger than Italy. What? W when did that happen? Well, not long ago. Uh, I understand it sneaked up on you, but uh, I'm, listen, I know that's a big that's a big pipe dream. Uh, to eat my way, you know, go from country to country. Although we do have a lot of great restaurants here in the St. Louis area. It's true. So if I different cuisines. That's kind of what I was thinking is, oh, my gosh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> Banana. Fill this dead air. <gasps> yeah, we could, right. like, get all the different, you know. Like, is there a good German restaurant? Is there a good English Well, that's German. what I was English thinking. We can, maybe we can find a restaurant loop. Balkan Treat House. Boom, there's one. Maybe we got a... a, a like an Italian restaurant. Yeah, Take it out of the place. That Mediterranean one we, we heard about. <clears throat> Boom, there and we it's, go. Yeah. It's Missouri. You don't have to go too far west to have all sorts of German places. Yeah, but, Greek uh, restaurant. I think we got to do it in one day. You know what? That'd be cool oh, to post, boy. too. If you actually, if we made a tour to Europe for the Riz show, like where you actually are going to go, and you yeah. get, people could do that on their own. They could be like, we want to do the Eating Through Europe Riz show edition. Yeah, we are food fans here. Yep. Yeah. Send over your, send over, 
Send, <laughs> <laughs> over, <laughs> send over your suggestions. I would love to like different different yeah, types we can make of a map and European cuisine. Yeah, yeah, we can make a St. Louis European map of I would love indulgence. To George May he will publish it in love the St. Louis it. magazine. It'll is Aya Sophia is Sophia open still? That's that oh, Turkish place. Mm, that sounds good. Well, that's it. That's the Riz bucket list right, as I, it exists now. It's beautiful. Oh, I think this is this is great. Most of these are pretty achievable. I think we so. can knock at least three of these off. Your drop, I think we can drop kick champagne, champagne. at your birthday for yeah. sure. We're going to have Golden Crow checked off by then. That's three for you. Coming in in a week. Man. Three out of 12. And we'll 13, to, you added one. And we'll get to everybody else's bucket list. Uh, as the week progresses, the week we'll progresses. get through them. But there you go. That's That is my official bucket list. Do that tomorrow for the Moon Valjean bucket list. Oh, you're, yeah, you're next. You got oh, some sweet. good stuff on here. Let me see yours. He has some good stuff on his. Yeah, he has not, some stuff I want to do on his as well. It's not super <laughs> lengthy. Well, what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm just, you're the second one on this. <laughs> the second one. The second one on this list is just a very moon. Oh. I can't, yeah. I can't even can't imagine what that is. I, I feel like they're all very moon. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're killing me with the tease. No, what is it? No, no, no. Tomorrow. Stay tuned. What, what to is tomorrow. it that I want to do? Tomorrow.